Hi, my name is Father Mike Schmitz and this is Essentia Presents. So I've received a number of emails, messages, a lot of questions regarding, um, okay, so what is up with A, the church is teaching on contraception and B, the church is teaching on in vitro fertilization because they're actually kind of two halves of the same coin. So it's, I thought, why not? You know, I'm not doing anything. I might as well tackle this relatively controversial and very difficult sometimes to understand topic. Now, let me give you a little background on myself. There was a time in my life when I just hated being Catholic and I was, I hated the church and was embarrassed about being Catholic. And, and it actually kind of all stemmed from this particular teaching. The church is teaching that um, sex must be open to life, that all sexual intercourse, all sexual actions must be oriented towards the procreation of children. Um, and I was like, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. I remember asking a bunch of priests and, and doctors, you know, like meaning like doctorate doctors, like teacher professors, nuns, like this kind of thing, sense of like, why is that? And no one was able to give me, well, they may, might have been able to give me a good answer. I was not able to hear any answer at all. Um, most people just told me like, well, don't worry about it. It's, the church is way behind the times and the, hopefully the church will catch up at some point. Thankfully, thanks be to God, the thing that brought me back to the church was someone speaking directly into this. Now, I won't be able to speak directly into this the way he was able to speak directly into this um, because it was a lot of years ago and I don't remember what he said. But here's my best attempt. Now, as I begin this attempt, again, clarification, is if you're in a place where like, I just don't get it, that makes no sense. I was in that place as well where I did not get it. It made no sense to me. Um, not that I had a horse in the race. Like I. I wasn't like interested in using contraception. It was more like, but this teaching just, argh. you might actually have a horse in the race. You might be married. You might be contracepting. You might be um, unable to conceive. And you're like, God, why does your church tell me that I can't do this thing in vitro fertilization? Like just because your heart gets broken every month when you're just hoping and praying for a child. So again, as I said, I didn't have a horse in the race at the time. I just had like the question but you might have a horse in the race. You might have the question, not only intellectually, you might have the question in your heart. And I just want to be as sensitive to that as I possibly can as I try to answer the question. Okay, so here's an attempt. Here's one possible explanation. There are other people who are smarter than me, who are holier than me, that could do a better job, but I'm the one with the camera. So here we go. Um, I think it, for me, it all comes down to um, the nature of a thing. So what is the, how do you know, what's the nature of a thing? Well, the nature of a thing is the what it is-ness of a thing, right? So uh, the nature of a chair is, this is the nature, this is the chair, it's the what it is-ness, it's a chair. The nature of a window is window-ness, right? It's the what it is-ness. How do you discover though, the nature of a thing is you have to look at the what is it forness of the thing, right? So what it isness is like, okay, that's the thing, that's the nature. How do you discover the nature? By looking at the what it's forness of the thing. So um, a chair is to sit upon, right? So things that are to sit upon are belong to the nature of chair, right? The nature of seat, whatever. Um, the things you put things on belong to the nature of table. The what it is forness points to the what it isness. Now I can use something according to its nature. I can put books on that table. I can sit on this chair, right? I can also use a thing for my own purposes. Like, so I mean, you've, I'm sure you've done this where you walk up to a table and you've sat on the table. That's not what it's for, but you've, you've used it for your own purpose. Or I've set things on this chair. I didn't sit on it, but I set things on it. I used it for my own purposes. And there's sometimes we can do that, right? The, what it's for in us is to set things on, but I'm sitting on it and not doing any damage. Um, what it's for is to sit upon, but I'm setting things on it, not doing any damage. Okay. So there are some things that have a, the what it isness is determined by what it's, what it's forness, but I can sometimes use it for another purpose and not violate the what it isness, right? So let's back up and look at sex, the sexual act. What is sex for? What's the nature of sex? Well, in order to understand the nature of sex, we have to find out the what it's forness of sex. So what is sex for? You'd realize it's for two things. It is for procreation and for uh, the unity of the couple. Then I say the second part, the unity of the couple, because we recognize that even as, the, as people come together in the sexual embrace, the body releases certain chemicals, certain hormones that actually are, are like bonding chemicals. They're actually meant to have, to increase affection and like make it stickier, right? So make uh, couples have more and more affection for each other. So it's actually meant to increase the unity that they experience, but also obviously is oriented towards procreation. This is the one human act that ends in, or can end in, end in uh, conception, right? So we recognize that what it's forness indicates the nature of the thing. What it's for, unity and procreation.
So you might say like bonding and babies. Is it? And that's again, that's not, that's not me making something up. That's not me saying, well, that's the religious answer. It's, it's just, that's the, that's the objective answer. That's what sex is for. That's the nature of sex. Now, okay, go back to our um, example. We so say you can, nature of a table to set things on, but I can also sit on it, right? So father, can I, the nature of sex is babies and bonding. Could I use it for my own purposes? So in some ways, yes. For example, um, if you had a, a husband and wife, and they're entering the sexual embrace. And maybe right now at this point, moment, they're entering the sexual embrace in this exact moment because they're like, no, um, she's ovulating. This is, she's most fertile right now. So yes, while we have affection for each other and love for each other, um, the reason we're entering into this moment of the sexual embrace is more for babies than it is for the unity. Or another time where it's not that, it's the opposite, where here's a couple, husband and wife, love each other, and they're wanting to experience the unity of the sexual embrace, whereas they're not really trying to achieve pregnancy. Can you do that? Yes, of course you can. Now, the issue comes when a person directly works against the nature of the thing. So back to our chair and back to our table example. I can sit on the chair, I can sit on the table. But if I were to say this, if I were to say, okay, uh, I'm gonna use the, my chair for my own purposes and I'm gonna put some logs in here, I'm gonna start splitting wood on the chair. Pretty quickly, I would violate the nature of chair. If I say, that's my table, it's my table, I can do whatever I want with it, uh, I can set things on it, um, I can sit on it, I can also jack my car up on the table so I change my oil. I pretty quickly violate the nature of the table. Why? Because there's some things you can do for your own purposes that don't violate the nature, table, chair, sex, but there's some things I do that or we could do that would actually disintegrate the very nature of the what it's forness of the table, of the chair, or of the sexual embrace. So what the church points out and reveals, again, it's not like making it up, but the church reveals is the contraception directly works against the very nature of the sexual embrace, which is conception. So it's contraception, right? It's not just entering the sexual embrace and not getting pregnant. It's working directly against that. And I can't work directly against conception without violating the very nature of what the sexual embrace is for. Does that make any sense? Same thing, same thing is true for in vitro. In vitro separates the unitive action from the procreative action. And I can't directly separate those things on purpose without violating the very nature of the sexual act. To violate the very nature of sex, this like just powerful, maybe most powerful, I don't know, of all human actions in some ways. A person can't, a couple can't do that without actually violating the very nature of the human person, I would say. So why does the church against this? Because the church wants you to be whole. Why does the church point out that, like, no, no, don't ever do that. Don't ever work against conception. Don't ever separate unity from procreation. Because the church wants you to be whole. The church wants you to be happy. The church wants you to have joy in your life. But you could say this, and this is kind of towards the end of the thing. You say, but Father, I can't have joy because I long for a child so badly that I'm willing to do anything for this child. How can I be whole if I can't conceive. And, I, and I, I want to say I get that, but I get it as best, as, good, as well as any celibate man can get it, you know. I get the desire for a child. But here's a deeper issue here too. Not only am I working against the very nature of the sexual embrace, here's what happens in in vitro. Um, a number of children are created before they're implanted, right? So the embryos are fertilized and we believe that life begins at conception. Because it does. <laughs> Not be, again, again, this isn't like a religious thing. This is life begins at conception because it does. Sex is for procreation and unity because it is, right? Life begins at conception and so is all these embryos that are frozen. These children, they're not allowed to grow to fruition. What do you do with all these children who have been created who are now in a freezer? Those are human beings. And this is one of the things that it, it can lead to. It, you know, so many, so many people in our, in our world, they see children as liabilities. But too often those people whose hearts have been broken by being infertile, by the, again, this, that, 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 that cross of infertility, sometimes we can begin to see children as commodities. And again, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to place any, any, any uh, judgment on anyone's heart at all. 
but recognize. He said, these people over here, they, they think children are a liability. I want a child. But the issue is, do I want a child enough to make that child a commodity? Because the gift of life, none of us deserve. No matter how good or how, how much good we do in this world, none of us deserve grace, none of us deserve life, and none of us like deserve to be parents. If we really believe that children are a gift, not everyone gets the gift. Not everyone gets the gift of bio, their own biological child. I don't have the gift of my own biological child. You chose that father, I'm like, yes, fine. God chose, he chose it for me, I just said yes, is all. What I'm trying to say is the very nature of sex is meant, is the what it's for us is towards babies and bonding. To work against either of them is to work against what it is to be human. No matter how like noble the cause would be. Now, say you have a boy, we did in vitro, in vitro, and now we have a child. Are you saying that they're not, they shouldn't be here? That you're, are you saying that they're, they're not really human? They're not made in God's image and likeness? I am absolutely not saying that. If you have been conceived through in vitro or your children have been conceived through in vitro, you are a child of God. They are, you're made in God's image and likeness. They are made in God's image and likeness. That's, that's the truth. You're loved by God. Not an accident, not a mistake. I started this whole video by saying that this is a, for me it was a very intellectual issue. And so I've been trying to address it like an intellectual issue, but I know that for so many people watching this, this is not an intellectual issue, this is a heart issue. My hope and my prayer is that this just began kind of opening the door to that there is a reason why the church is against contraception and there's a reason why the church is against in vitro fertilization because it doesn't let people be whole and it doesn't let couples be whole. And God wants you to be whole. Even if in the midst of that wholeness, there is a hole in your heart. God loves you mm, very much. For all of us here to Sensor Presents, my name is Father Mike. God bless.